come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Fill us 
Good morning. Welcome to Coffee and Prayer. You'll see I've got my cross and crown. Lutheran Church School official French roast coffee cup. Today is the first Sunday of uh, Advent. I'm Pastor Ted Peters, and let's open our worship in the strong name of the Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. On this first day of Advent and the first day of the new church year, O oh God, we look forward, we expect, we anticipate, we hope. We expect Christmas and we hope for your second coming and for the renewal of all things in the new creation. In this mood of hope for renewal, O oh God, of grace, we lift up before you the plight of our brothers and sisters in Israel and Palestine. Shed an extra measure of your liberating grace on Palestinian Christians now incarcerated by marginalization and political repression. Let these people of faith know that we and others around the world remember them, love them, treasure them, and pull for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, we're going to give a special measure of attention to our sisters and brothers in Palestine and Israel and throughout the Middle East. On a world and on our way, reading is from the Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 to 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and had delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and we are, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, Word of life. The psalm for this, the first Sunday of Advent, is Psalm number 80, a prayer for Israel's restoration. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. 
You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors. Our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Word of God, word of life. Ready? <laughs> oh. Um, the epistle for today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge for every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by him. You were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Word of God, word of life. season of Advent is sometimes called the season of waiting. I think it would better be called the season of yearning or hoping or expecting. Yes, we're looking forward to Christmas, but beyond that, to the apocalyptic eschatological instantiation of the kingdom of God. Did you get all that? Our Gospel for this first Sunday in Advent is taken from Mark chapter 13. It's one of the apocalyptic passages. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, says Jesus, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. 
Jesus goes on. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch, therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, Keep awake. Well, that sentence that Jesus prophesies, then they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, that he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. We can be stirred by this promise of triumph and power and victory. But the disciples surrounding Jesus on that day did not see triumph, power, or victory in their own generation. No, what they saw was really quite different instead of power and glory coming on the clouds what Jesus's family and friends saw instead was crucifixion instead of triumph Jesus surrendered to defeat instead of victory Jesus suffered death with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm God had rescued the Hebrew slaves from their Egyptian oppressors. But here in the case of his own incarnate son, God seemed to be absent when he was suffering and dying. Today, we're remembering our sisters and brothers in Palestine, our Arab Christians, who along with some of their Muslims are suffering political oppression in their own homeland in Palestine. And there doesn't seem to be much hope decades after decades go by without anyone coming to rescue them from the oppression of the state of Israel, which began already in 1948. No, God doesn't seem to be coming on a white horse with the cavalry in triumph over their oppressors. No, they just keep enduring decade after decade. Terrorism, mistreatment, marginalization, denial of rights, poverty. That's what the people of God have endured, experienced now, and boy, at least for the near future, they don't have any hope that someone's going to rescue them. So our Palestinian brothers and sisters just wonder, where is God? Well, is riding in on a white horse with a mighty army and defeating our enemies the only thing that God does? In the middle of all of this that could lead to despair, the Palestinians do mention that something very important happened right there in their land, namely the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. That's right. 
when the people of God, under the thumb of Roman domination and empire, had no recourse, God sought to become incarnate and dwell full of grace and truth right there. Right there. That's a surprise. I'm going to read you a paragraph from Mitri Rahib. Mitri is a Lutheran pastor at the Evangelical Lutheran Christmas Church in Bethlehem. Our Palestinian brothers and Christians, brothers and sisters live in Bethlehem, as you probably know. And Pastor Rahib laments the fact that nobody has come to rescue the Palestinians, but yet he ponders the significance of God choosing divine self-revelation in the midst of loss, not victory. Pastor Rahib says Palestine was the unexpected place for God to reveal himself. The cross became the symbol for Palestinian identity. The ultimate revelation on the cross shows that there is no place on earth in history in one's own life where God cannot reveal himself. God is there where no one expects God. There even when we do not count on him, there, there when he hopes, when hope seems lost. God is there when hope seems lost. The good news proclaimed on the cross was and is this, expect God in the most unexpected places. Well, our own forebearer and that of Mitri Rahib is Martin Luther, and he called this the theology of the cross. So if you're looking for a God of triumph, look at the cross. If you're looking for a God of victory, look at the cross. If you're looking for a God of eternal life, look at death on the cross. That's what Luther said. Let me read a paragraph from Luther. The manifest and visible things of God are placed in opposition to the invisible, namely his human nature, weakness, foolishness. It does us no good to recognize God in his glory and majesty unless we recognize him in the humility and the shame of the cross. Then he quotes Isaiah 45, truly thou art a God who hidest himself. Well, where does this leave us? Well, first, we in California should keep our minds and our hearts on our sisters and brothers in Christ everywhere in the world. And on this particular Sunday, those in Palestine and Israel. Second, we at Cross and Crown, Lutheran Church and School, should keep our prayers focused from time to time on those people who yearn for liberation, who want freedom and want self-direction, but can't get it. Even those in Bethlehem, the town where our Lord and Savior was born. Thirdly, we in Roanoke Park should keep alive our hope for peace. Peace for Jews, Muslims, and Christians right there in the place where the Prince of Peace was born, Israel and Palestine. Amen. Join me in the prayers of intercession uh, with you. The Lord be with you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church the world and all who are in need. Holy God, 
rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship and liven our worship with sincere and heartfelt music and prayer and meditation. O Holy Spirit, you inspire the artists among us, so in your mercy, hear our prayer. You can say, hear our prayer out loud. We come to you, O God of resurrection, with feet still stuck in the world of the cross. Around us and among us, people are dying by the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, victims of the rampant COVID-19 disease. Like a horse from the apocalypse, the plague gallops through our community without regard to whom it brings grief. As you brought refuge and strength to the psalmist, actually, the psalmist we heard this morning was like our Palestinian brothers and sisters, somewhat in despair, trying to get comfort in the face of what appears to be God's absence. Bring us a portion of the psalmist's strength here and now. O oh God, you are our sword and our shield in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities. Nothing in creation is outside your concern, almighty God. In your mercy, tend to all. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all that you have made. O oh God, you are our rainbow of promise. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for a full embrace of racial equality and compassion, for the liberation of the Palestinians, both Christian and Muslim, for concord during this time of political rivalry and unrest in the United States. For the heads of state, legislators, local civic leaders, that they enact wise procedures to lead us into a healthy and a prosperous future. O oh God, you are our mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for all who are in need, especially those in our Cross and Crown community, Paul and Paula, Barb, Richard, Lynn, Jonita, Deborah, Richard, Stephen, Ditka, Lynn, Abigail, Linda. Those are in need of long-term abidance. Joanne, Carol, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, Gabe, Mark, and Kendra. For those homebound, Robert and Leona, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, Jenny, Norma. Oh God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We receive our thanks for all who died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life. Where sorrows will be no more into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. You can say it out loud. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. I think maybe one more sip of the coffee. Mm, down to room temperature. Next week, second Sunday of Advent. Next week, we're going to remember an obscure Christian leader in Turkey in the fourth century, a guy named St. Nicholas. So between now and then, see if you can figure out who St. Nicholas is. Maybe you can Google that. Bye-bye.